Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Behind the Mic. I'm Pam Rossi, and uh, welcome to 2018. Wow, uh, <laughs> a new year. I thought it would be interesting uh, this year I do something a little, to start off with a little different. Oh, see, I've been off two weeks for the holidays. I forgot to mention thank you to our sponsors, Michigan State University Community School of Detroit and Children's Hospital of Michigan Foundation. Without those two, this music town would not be happening. So thank you so much to our sponsors to help us out with this great uh, place where I feature musicians. We have all kinds of stuff going on here. And um, as I said, this time, this first one for 2018, I thought let's start with somebody that's similar to the music. As you can see, our guest has no uh, guitar or uh, instrument <laughs> pretending, but I uh, wanted to have this guy in. This is Jarrett Carol, um, Coral, excuse me, Jarrett Coral. Welcome. Yes, hello, thank you. Thank Thanks you for, for coming in. Here, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, normally, uh, you know, this my show is all about local musicians and I bring them in, you know, they play some songs and everything, but it's a little different mm -hmm. today. Um, but somehow a part of it, it all fits you, together. Exactly. You know. It's all the same thing. Um, so I wanted to have you in here and talk about it. Uh, for people that do not know who you are, you are, um, you know, there's got to be a good name. You're an entrepreneur, you're a music lover, you're, um, you're a driven man, <laughs> and you own, you started a record label. So we're going to, we've got so much to talk about this. And I know a lot of people listening are musicians, they tune in regularly, and um, this might also help them to decide, mm -hmm. should yeah. I put out a vinyl record or not? So, right. you know, I think... You, you probably will touch on some things and have them thinking about that and uh, and go from there. So, so again, welcome to Music yeah, Town Behind the Mic. I appreciate you coming you. in. Yeah, 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 no doubt. Thanks for having uh, me. You probably can tell this guy is young, but uh, even though you've been doing this a while. So uh, you started Jet Plastic Recordings. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I started okay. in a... Oh, listen to him, ma'am. Oh, oh, yes, <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I started, uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm rehearsing for my State of the Union. Oh, there you, you go. See. No, um, you know, I started in uh, 2012, and it's 2018, I guess, now. So I've been doing it for uh, that many years. Um, and uh, I get uh, local bands and musicians to uh, record, and then I release the, them on vinyl records. And um, recently I've been branching out a bit and, um, you know, plans to open a storefront this year and plans to... You know, mm. like signed a first artist who's you know in the UK and stuff like that. Wow. So um, this has been a year of you know 2017 was more so a year of planning for me. Although I put out like 16 or so records and ran a two day festival with about 20 bands. Uh, Jet downtown. Blast is that the one you're talking? Yes, Jet it Blast? was. Okay. Yeah, and it, that that was that was quite a lot of fun. Um, lots of people came, which was cool because somehow, uh, you know, sometimes it seems like an unrewarding experience to be doing this for so long and not really getting much out of it but you know lots of people came and they were excited because that was the five-year anniversary of the thing yeah. so i've been doing this for uh five years and it doesn't it, feel like it but, well which is good you know which is amazing let's put it that way let's back up a little bit okay this, yeah. that was kind of in a nutshell of what you you do but you started this you were 14 correct no what, what? You started your... I, I don't even know. The years are <laughs> flying by, Pam. I okay, don't know. Okay, really? Um, no, it's, uh, it's 2012, so I was uh, six. Six, okay. No, no, no. No, wait a minute. No, that doesn't make sense. I okay, was, my um, math. Wait no, a minute. No, yeah. No, uh, yeah, I was, I was 12 or 13, I think. But actually, yeah. your love for the music really yeah, started, no I think, five or six when you said six. Yeah. And how did that all start? Um, uh, I have a family owned uh, and operated record store called Melodies and Memories. Mm -hmm. It's in East Point. And... Um, got into records from there and got into music and I started collecting records and started, you know, assembling a small collection. And then, um, you know, when I was about 11 or 12, I was attending the School of Rock at that time. I went for a season at the School of Rock. Okay. And um, I met a few musicians there who were wanting to put out, you know, one who had, named Greg, and he had put out a full-length vinyl record mm -hmm. and he had some songs left over from the sessions that he wanted to release separately. So I kind of volunteered to do it on a seven inch, you know, and which think, is like a forty five. Well, yeah, which is a forty five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just using the tech lingo. Yeah, <laughs> and then um, yeah, the yeah, but um, he we did that, and um, I thought it was going to be a thing where it would um, I'd have a box of them in my closet or something like that, you know, mm -hmm. like thirty years on. But it sold out, and then wow. that branched into getting into other things and LPs, and now I'm at like sixty releases. 
that's so, quite um, uh, yeah, sixty-seven. I, yeah. The thing that that amazes me, you know, I was, you know, this is the first time we've met actually. Yeah. So, you know, I was, you know, kind of looking into your background and everything, and it was I'm just flattered. Thank well, you. <laughs> well, that's the part of the interview, yeah, and you yeah. know, and you should know that. Uh, we'll talk because you're yeah. a, you used to write for the Metro uh, Times, so we'll right. talk about that too. But so you know about interviewing, but I was looking through and I thought the just the ages that you progressed. Um, you know, at five and six, you know, at your uh, uncle's mm -hmm. record store. And, you know, just at that point, you know, I don't think, I mean, it's very rare you would find someone that young that just, you know, feels that passion right away. And obviously you did that by going, you know, listening to these records. Um, what were some of the first records that you listened to uh, at right, your like, uncle's um, store? I, I don't know. Like, I, I remember distinctly two records that I got um, – um, the, the, there, were, there were probably more, but I remember Paul McCartney and the w and Wings, the Band on the Run, okay. and then a Kiss Alive album. Both and good. They were really uh, these really beat up albums, you know, like they were. Oh, weren't like, they in the dollar bin or something? Yeah, 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 they were. They were cheap, <laughs> but um, you know, like like I was like six years old. You're not going to give me a nice record. You know? <laughs> so um, my dad brought those, and uh, you know, it's like I think it was the whole thing where I was surrounded by music from a young age because mm -hmm. I'd go to the store at length and you know be around records, and then eventually. The next feasible step to, well, from you know, collecting records was to make my own because I see these local musicians who are wanting to put out music. And, and how old you? you this know. was uh, when you were how old at this point? This was like so I was five, five or six, you know, going, getting into it, and getting into records, and then from there, you know, going through elementary school and then middle school, I started, you know, like collecting records by like independent labels, like okay. this Infinity Cat out of Nashville and places like that. That I was really interested in because they were doing the whole, the whole DIY aspect. Mm -hmm. that they, we can make our own thing because we don't need to sign to a major label, you know. So um, then I figured, okay, I'll do it. So mm -hmm. I, uh, um, you know, like had some time off, like breaks, breaks in between classes. I'd spend in the computer lab at school, just you know, looking over cover artwork and stuff, which isn't what a normal twelve-year-old is doing. <laughs> no, but I mean, you you're know, right. No, <laughs> it's like uh, you know, it's the whole it's the whole package of it. I yeah. just really enjoyed it as a whole just you know the whole like holding a record putting it on and you know you can make them different colors and it's cool it's neat you know you amaze me it's like again like you said it's most kids that age wouldn't mm -hmm. even think of something like that but of course you you had a little push because you were on your uncle's store so that helped I mean I'm wondering if your uncle didn't have that store would you still be so involved with the record uh, and you know the music I mean, industry I mean I don't I don't think so because um, my Father and my uncle have been doing the store since 1988, I'd like to okay. say. I'm bad with years. As you know, I don't even know how old <laughs> I was. But, um, yeah, um, they, they, they did the store for a long time, and it, it's still open. But I really don't think that I would have been involved in it, you know, if I didn't know. Because, I mean, at this point, if they didn't have the store and, you know, I wasn't surrounded by records, mm -hmm. I'd... I'd be one of these people who are going into a record store saying people oh, they still make records. Yes, yes. You know, so I think that definitely that's um that was the catalyst for it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. You never know. I mean, obviously yeah. that helped yeah. you take this certain path. Got records in my blood. Yeah. <laughs> Big time. Yeah. How curious how many records in your collection right now? Ooh, a lot. A lot. Um, I don't thousands? I, yeah, I haven't counted them recently, but a lot of them. There's a lot. Yeah, um, you know, and it's like I can imagine. I but I, I recently saw you know because I go to record stores and pick up records, but then I noticed that I had assembled a small pile of maybe twenty records to the side that I hadn't even touched yet or played. Uh -huh. So then I was like, oh, I better actually play these records because I mean, you know, a fair amount of someone's record collection they listen to these records, but me, right. I'm like, you know, full time student. And I'm doing the record label and I'm you know doing this and doing that and I don't have. You know, it's yeah, like, you're very even busy. though I have the label, I don't have much time to listen to records themselves. <laughs> well, hopefully you're you know. listening to the records that you are um, Oh, doing. thank God. At least there's one thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At, at least those. Yeah. So but, how, and you said this, how many um, different artists do you have on vinyl? Right now? Um, artists, I'd like to say close to, close to 40, close to That's 40, maybe 45. I haven't, you know, um, amassed a master list. But as of right now, I know the, the catalog going t through April of this year now, 2018. That's mm -hmm. weird. A going through April of this year, it's we're at 67. So, wow. and those are vinyl only. We'll save for one cassette. One of those is cassette. Cassette? Well, yeah. we haven't heard that term in a while. Yeah, I know. I know. It was cassettes a, it, coming it, back, do you think? No. I didn't think so. Not okay. at all. That was a total gimmick thing. Uh, we just okay. did that. It was a giveaway for a local festival because it was fun. And how would people uh, play it, though? That's a good question. 
<laughs> you know, but pe- people people sometimes buy cassettes. I mean, on occasion, because sometimes you know their car only plays cassettes because they didn't have CDs as really? you know this. It yeah. must be an old like car. Like two thousand two, two thousand three. My mom's car, she only has a cassette player. Really? Okay. Yeah. I don't, yeah. So um, you know, it might come in handy for that. But as of, as for me, I'm for the uh. You know, I'm not like an audiophile where I need to listen to the best sounding record. You know, right, if it like, right, right. if I have it, that's fine. Are you <laughs> one of those people that you know you hear this a lot, um, especially us DJs? Yeah. You know, that used to put the needle on. You know, come turn it back a quarter, quarter inch, so when you hit the play, it's right on the first note. And right. and people say the sounds of the vinyl, the scratching and the hissing is, you know, it's just. It's near and dear to a lot of people. Yeah, no doubt. And um, I don't know anything about pressing the vinyl, but do you still get all of that when you yeah, press yeah. now? Yeah, because now, um, really, the only really marketable difference I can recognize is when something is, you can hear, you know, when, when someone releases, like Taylor Swift when it releases a new album, mm-hmm. and it's on iTunes, and it says mastered for iTunes, which means that they changed the volume level to be something where it's sounding the best on this equipment okay so but with that you can also master it for vinyl oh okay. so that means you know you can have the best sounding record you know mm-hmm. based off that and sometimes it's different than the cd or different than the files or whatever mp3 yeah but um yeah i mean it's the whole, the whole package of it the, the cover art works in large you can look at it you can take out the sleeve you can look at the lyrics and you can i take out love the that and you can hold you know? it i mean it's the some of the classic know. albums i mean they're art they're pieces yeah, of yeah. art almost because of you know the, the, the colors and the, the drawings and yeah. everything. It just and and you don't get that with digital. You you miss out on that. So. Right, because I mean you can't hold a file, so yeah. you know you know. <laughs> but I mean even even CDs, you know, like I, I I buy CDs on occasion, you know, and it's like you know it's nice because you get to hold it mm-hmm. and you get to because yes. I mean thirty years thirty forty years ago you never would have thought that you can like you know have a phone and just play music mm-hmm. off of it and that's what it is because you had records or eight tracks right, or cds right. or you know reel to reels and stuff like that Real so i mean oh. you know yeah, <laughs> yeah they're definitely edison cylinder yeah. what's that edison cylinder the wax <laughs> cylinder yeah crank it up oh my gosh they um that's a lot of the um artists as you probably know you're they're bringing vinyl back and of course the record day really helped i think the right. a lot of artists to do something like that and it's a great gimmick i don't want to use the word gimmick so oh, much it is. but yeah yeah you know put something on vinyl mm-hmm. yeah because record store day that's in april every year and that brings out people to local record stores that are you know often fighting to stay open yeah, yeah. and it brings them and that brings them a lot of business and then i've noticed you know being around record store days for the past few years say you know if um like, uh, I don't know, Devo releases a new album and someone wants to go out and get the Devo record on mm-hmm. Record Store Day because it's only available this day. They go in the store and then they end up buying maybe, you know, $100 worth of other stuff that the store had just had. Right. You know, so right. it brings them business and um, it's a great way to get the shoe in the door mm-hmm. as to, you know, figuring out, you know, what the next logical step is. I'm you know. sure, you know, and I, I have to research this, but I would imagine the people or person that started record store was a record store person you know, owner y- yeah <laughs> you know? um, I've, I've talked to him how do we past. get these people in our stores uh, his name is michael kurtz i'm not sure if he was a record store owner but i know he was a collector i don't okay. know i um I'll have, to, I'll have to look that up actually yeah but he started it i remember and um you know there's there's because there's, there's no reason to be making 45 rpm seven inch records because nobody's making money with those because if you're doing it it's for the love of you know having this right, thing right. exist or having it be out in the open so um you know it's just really the whole love of it because i mean i started this in 2012 when no one was really thinking about getting into records or when records hadn't taken an yeah. upswing yet so i got in on the ground floor when people were you know, not yet really interested, but they were like, oh, they're still making records. Now they're like, oh, they're still making records. <laughs> you know, just did you a, have a, a little bit more excitement. Did you kind of have that vision, like, this is going to take off, or did you just... No, no? not at all. Okay. Um, I just started it off, and, um, you know, because in the beginning, I started with the one thing, and then I thought that was going to be it, and mm-hmm. then I branched that off, and then had with the money I made from that, that went into the next two things, and then that money went into these two things, and then this money, and it branches off, you know, because it's always seed money for everything. Right. So, I mean, really, it's like I, I had no idea that it would take off, like, in this capacity. Do you think at this point, because you're, you're kind of 
let's say paycheck to paycheck, you know, doing mm -hmm. taking the money and using it for the next one. Do right. you do you think this would be something that eventually will be a, a good business for you? Yeah, sustainable. I, yeah, yeah, I, I think so. Um, you know, because it used to be difficult because going off and you know just doing these records by local bands and all this, and I didn't know how to promote it. I slowly learned, but I didn't know how to you know go go at it from a management standpoint. Mm -hmm. So um, now I realize there's people in the industry, you know, I realized this two or three years ago, that this, there's people in the industry who have had experience and who wanted to reach out to me and say, hey, I can help with this because I know you're doing all this. Because up to, up to like a year ago, I was doing everything, you know, like the records and the marketing and all this and the distribution and mm. the shipping and That's all this. That's a lot. You know, I sometimes don't have time for shipping and all this <laughs> stuff. So it's like, and going to school. So it's like all this stuff in a, you know, rolled in a ball. It's just difficult for me. So then I got to start allotting tasks to people. And luckily I've had some people reach out who are interested in helping, you know, like with marketing and social media oh, and that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, and well, you, you know, yeah. I mean, learning the business, you are, you're right hands on. So, yeah, you know. no, yeah, no doubt. Now it's cause you know, it, I, I had come to the assumption that it was like something where, you know, I don't want to give it off to somebody else cause then they'll screw it up. And I built this up over five <laughs> years and then it's going to watch it burn to the ground like Spartacus. Uh, and I don't want to do that. You know, no, I, I have a feeling that wouldn't have happen with you. No, so. So, so somehow I feel not, I have a. You know, so sometimes uh, look feels like I be, I'm surrounded by good people who want to help out. You know, because I'm doing this out of you know helping out local musicians, and I'm doing. Well, let's this talk for, local musicians. You know, I mean, you are a stuff. huge fan of Detroit music. Yeah, no doubt. I understand. And, yeah, uh, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Wait a minute. That's not <laughs> what I read. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You. Um. You know the especially the older. Um, right. Musicians. You know, MC Five and right. Stooges. Yeah. MC Five, Stooges, Rationals, all that. Um. And you know it's it's like all built up because you know these these are people that I got to meet like John Sinclair and Wayne Kramer from oh, MC5 yeah. and I got to meet these people through doing the records you know and it's like it's strange because I used to listen to their records and now like they're friends mm. so I'm like I can call them up which is cool but I mean it's also something where you know local music has something you know like Detroit has something that's I, I, I don't know. It's just difficult to describe mm -hmm. where, you know, because in, the, in the, like, the, the 30s and 40s and even the 50s, like in Hastings Street and stuff like that, and, like these blues musicians would go from working long shifts at the car factory and then they'd come to the bar, like the Apex Bar or something, and they'd play. And these are songs about their life. Yeah. So it's something where, you know, how Detroit's ingrained to be a working city. Mm -hmm. And then through all that... Um, you know, I, th I think it's just grown from there. I mean, I, I, I still still think it's the same with a lot of musicians here where, um, you know, they're taking, you know, discussions about real life and they're, they're putting them to song. Mm -hmm. Like, because there's a lot of musicians who aren't, you know, like, like Taylor Swift, there's only so much like you can take you can take out of that. And I mean, it's not about like the hardships of working in a middle class city because you know that's not what it is. Right. But I mean, you know, and it's not it's not a pop song either. You know, it's um. But I mean, it's it's certainly certainly gone there, and I'm trying to bridge the gap from you know because a few years ago it took a sharp decline with music. I'm, I'm not going to say like sharp decline, but you know people it kind of alienated a lot of people away with you know with rap music and techno and all that it mm -hmm. kind of brought brought people away from wanting to listen to some new music or like okay. listen to like detroit was known as like a techno mecca mm -hmm. so some people were just kind of turned off from that you know and not because there weren't many rock bands around like in the 80s they were like like it was like mumblings and bars you know? <laughs> but it's it, but, um, but but today it, it's definitely, grown yes yeah definitely it's grown up and there's, there's something going on every night here and i'm you know yeah blessed to have the opportunity because this is a you know, it's a one day. I I don't think if this would have if I would have been raised in any other city, even if it was a music store, I don't think this record thing would have worked out. Just because you know everybody's so supportive here and everybody's trying to get their way, and well, not like everybody's trying to make their way, not like get their way, right, like, right, right. You know, but um, everybody's really trying hard to to make it, mm -hmm. and um, because it's a city that's you know, as I said, it's like ingrained to be, you have to work if you want to get it. Yeah, what would you say to musicians? that, um, you know, they, they don't know about putting their music on vinyl or, you know, if they should or shouldn't. You know, right. I mean, it's an expense, obviously. Oh, definitely. Um, what, what would you say to musicians who are on the fence about that? I mean, it's a lot of money to do it, um, and it's a lot of money to start off. But when you're coming at it and you can go to you can go to your merch table at a show 
and someone can pick up a record, there's going to be people interested, and they'll sell. Um, they'll sell more than CDs. Local record stores, you can go there, and they'll, they'll buy some off of you to have in stock. Mm-hmm. Um, because one of the things I always loved, um, Hello Records, which is downtown in Corktown, um, Wade, Wade Kurgan runs it. And when I first started out the label, he had the mentality that, well, he still does, that if I'm working so hard to make this thing exist, he should carry it in the shop just because that I just because I had put so much effort into making this thing, you mm-hmm. know. So, you know, like I really appreciate that mentality where, you know, but it's like I realize that there's a lot of musicians who are having a difficult time of, you know, figuring out where to begin because some rec- pressing plants won't even take orders because people are making too many records, <laughs> which is it's, it's really? just like a good problem to have. Okay, yeah. yeah, I guess. Yeah, okay. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. <laughs> but um, it's, it's, it's one of these things where, you know, um, they're having a difficult time figuring out where to start or the first steps because, I mean, there's a lot of steps. There's cutting, then there's plating, then mm-hmm. there's actually pressing the record, then there's making the vinyl, then there's the labels and the artwork, all that stuff, you know, yeah. everything in, yeah. a, in a box. So, um, you know, if anybody's listening and wants to, you know, like do a record on their own or anything, like please go forward. I have a website. Um, just look look it up and contact me. I'm more than happy to help, you know, like figure it out because it's taken me five years to slowly figure out mm-hmm. how everything works out. And if I would, if I could have heard that in all one concise email, <laughs> boy, oh boy, that would have been the best thing in the yeah. world. I'll tell you that. You know? Well, I, you know, I mean, you sound like you're the type that will just keep figuring it out until, you know, you, you think you got it. Yeah, and I won't stop. You yeah, can't that's, stop me. Yeah. Which is good for you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 to certainly. Be more people like that, yeah. you know, um, and it's obviously working for you. I mean, Come on, you started so young, and you're only 19 now. Right. So my gosh, you've right. got you've you've got a path, obviously. Yeah, you know I mean, what it's, you're doing. it's um it's good, and it's, it's growing exponentially to the point where you know 2018, planning to open a storefront, and um, what city? Um, that's a great question. Okay. Um, l- looking at uh, various buildings at the moment, um, found one, looked at one this morning. Oh, okay. Um, but you know, um, planning to do that this year and planning to have a facility where I'm able to press my own records. Yeah, now you're using a couple different presses. Yeah, um, which is, you know, because Archer Record Pressing runs out of Detroit, and I use Gotta Groove sometimes there in Cleveland. Um, but it's like, you know, if I can if I can somehow expedite the process, because Archer, he does, like, my runs typically for a record, I can make 500 to 1,000 records. It doesn't seem like much. But, um, you know, if it's a local band that's playing shows and mm-hmm. they're only playing so often, it's a good amount. Okay. But Archer presses, he can press, like, 10,000 records for a techno artist and sell them in Europe, and they'll sell immediately. So, I mm-hmm. mean, this is, like a, this is like a side thing for him making these 300, 400, okay. 500 okay. record runs. Well, I'm glad you have that yeah, option. Yeah, yeah. Me, me, too, me too. I mean, it couldn't have it any other way. But, I mean, if I'm able to have my own thing where I'm able to go forward with local musicians and actually, you know, like, help them make things, you know, like, expedite the process Mm -hmm. and help them create these things and you know like from a hands-on approach that that, that's my ultimate goal kind of miss get get rid of a a step of you know for cost would you need a huge place to have a pressing yeah i mean um like the 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 press the pressing area um it's recommended that each press takes up around a thousand square feet but um wouldn't need that much space because obviously there's a lot of components like a cooling unit there's a Mm -hmm. boiling there's a boiler there's multiple presses and then there's you know like there's the trimming and then there's the you know the like st- stamping out the center yeah. hole punch and yeah. so um, you don't think about you know, that when you're putting that record on the don't, on the turntable no, how no, much goes no, into that no you can just buy it and then there it yeah, is you know yeah. but you know I wanna I wanna do that because that's that's the next step for me really because I'm doing all this stuff I have bands who are going on tour like I have um, you know like lots of bands that I'm working with that are actually you know touring touring bands that are actually going on tour and trying to make a name for themselves from Detroit mm-hmm. which is you know spectacular because yeah. you know you never you, know you know you t- <laughs> as you're talking i'm thinking you said you already looked at something this morning okay yeah. so you did that you you're here today for our show and then you got to go to class down at wayne state yeah, you know, I, which I, is I'm not too far back, from here back but to class at 1 30 yeah. the work I mean, ethic like, yeah, that you have like, is very impressive it's like again from the detroit area the midwestern work ethic mm-hmm. you know if you were somewhere else you know california or something you may not have that i mean i'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I sleep a lot and I goof off a lot, but <laughs> in the end, I mean, it all, it, it all works out, you know. So it's like, it's one of those things where, you know, I know that if I don't do it, then I'm it just going to, you know, I'm not I'm not going to get anywhere. So Boy, I mean, if I'd more rather, people had rather do it that, today than tomorrow, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. If you can do it today, why put it off till tomorrow? It's, yeah, definitely. Which is probably why you've gone so far, you know, from such a young age, and so you've accomplished so much. You know, you're only 19. Oh right. my gosh, you know, it's just some people don't only do all of that, and they're you know. 50, 60. It's just uh, pretty impressive. Right. You know, yeah, yeah. You've got. And I'm sure your parents have a lot to do with that. And, yeah, 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 you know, no doubt. Helping you with all of that. Um, and let's back up. I mean, how many people, you were in the Rolling Rolling Stone magazine, right? They did. Yeah, they did um, Rolling Stone, MTV, The Guardian, and uh, probably other stuff. How I, old were you when that came out? Ooh, that was, I was, I was 16, because I remember that's when I worked with Macaulay Culkin, because from the Home oh, Alone yeah. movies, I'm doing like a parody record for the Velvet Underground called the Pizza Underground and it was a you know it was, it was it was a total joke thing but I did that and that got a lot of attention I was on the local news and then that blew up and then MTV Rolling Stone and all that and there was actually a TV show like a like an afternoon talk show on a major network and they emailed me wanting me to come in but I couldn't go cuz I had school <laughs> So your mom's like, nope, you got school. It's a school yeah, night. That was an actual discussion. Yeah. So um, I, I, yeah. I kind of I don't know your mom, but I kind of you know could envision, envision that. Yeah. That's funny. She's great. Yeah. She's but, your um, president, is because you were too young to be. Uh, not anymore. Owned. I've usurped the power. Oh. I'm the, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, she I helped was, you uh, out because you were too yeah, young to. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I was too young to um, <laughs> to actually legally own a business because I uh, you know started out when I was twelve. <laughs> it just blows so me I, away. I couldn't, you know, legally have, you know, like do the taxes and the paperwork and all that <laughs> unless it was under. I'm only name. 12. Uh, can't do a tax return. Yeah. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. That is fun. That's just amazing. So, you know, yeah. you again, you're I think you are inspiring for a lot of people. And, you know, they people think, well, I, you know, I can't do this. or I can't do that. And, and you seem to be the person that says. How can I do this? Yeah, it's like no. a, it's a total DIY work ethic, work ethic, and it's something that's authentically Detroit, mm -hmm. I think. I mean, I mean, like, I'm not patting myself on the shoulder no. or anything, but it's like one of those things where, you know, I know that I have to do it because nobody else is. I mean, if I, had, if I didn't put out these records by these local bands, nobody else would have, and then, I, then they would have been doing the same thing they were doing five years ago, not, you know, like, like still, still playing, but not really knowing what to do. Not like they're clueless or anything, but just... You know, not, you know, not like a fully formed, you know, because it's a major step when you have your own record. Right. And I've noticed, you know, handing records off to musicians or something, they're like, wow, this is like a thing. Because this is something they grew up with. Yeah. And yeah, now, another step for their And now career. they have this. And it's like, you know, it's it's like something that validates your, mm -hmm. validates the Do you go music. out looking for the artist, say, hey, I want to put them on vinyl, or, or most of the people come to you? Uh, um, a lot of people come to me, and I have friends who go to lots of local shows, and they say, hey, you should check this band out. And I'm like, okay. okay. And then I check them out. But it's mostly like, you know, because I started going to, you know, like bar shows when I was 12, <laughs> or a little before that, actually. Like at, like uh, downtown and places like that, uh -huh. but um, now that I'm 19, I'm tired of bars. I mean, I'm really, I'm, I'm out of that phase. So, so where do you like, go yeah. now then? Just what? like festivals? Is that yeah. where you would? You, yeah. you don't do the bar scene anymore. Where do you go? I just go gambling. No, um, <laughs> no, um, you know, you know, um, you know, like I go to shows when when you know, like I know I know a band or like okay. it's a band that I've that I've heard of. Like if my friend says, "Hey, this band's really good. You should check out this show," I go and check it out. You know, but it's like I don't. You know, I don't go out as much as I used to. Yeah. Well, you're a busy man. Yeah, well, yeah, I guess so. Which, which is strange because I'm, you know, so young and I'm disillusioned on the scene. But it's also this is the most positive reinforcement community because I started young, real young, and um, I could see that you know, like alcohol and drug use and stuff like that. It really affected these people who <laughs> were in the business for so long. I mean, not, not all of them, like, you know, like a select few people. Uh, a good portion of yeah, them. Yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I'm like, I, I, can, I can see what's going on, and, you know, I'm like, I don't want to be like that. So it's like, you know, it's like shied me away from doing anything like that. So I'm like, Oh, you're you know, super I'm like, focused. I'm just so like that... straight laced and fun, and you know, go get to the, the job done. And, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah, it's the way to go at it. You know. Now you mentioned that you would like to get a storefront this year. Yeah, so yeah. Um, what? Where do you see your? You know, you get your storefront. Say like five years. Where do you mm -hmm. see your company and you? Um. Uh, I, I want to run it as a storefront that has a joint opportunity for live performance. So I want to have live nice. performance in there, and I want to be able to sell products from not only Jet Plastic but other local labels and you know other records like 
you know, Taylor Swift, I mentioned her three times so far. <laughs> Must but, be a um, fan. <laughs> the new album is pretty good. But, okay. um, you know, like, uh, I'll, I'll switch tunes and say, like, the Doobie Brothers or something like that. We'll have the Doobie Brothers in there. So it's like, you know, I, I want to have that. But going down the road, I want to see it as something where, you know, now I've been doing these records and stuff, but now I've gotten people to help out to where these bands can go on tour and these bands can you know, get placements in radio and TV and these bands can do this and they can, you know. So I'm hoping that from there I'm able to push it to another level to where I can actually, you know, you know, um, promote bands and take a band from, the, from like the ground up if I see something in them or that they can be marketable or if people will enjoy their music, you know, mm -hmm. more so. So you're very, the same you're thing. kind of like a promoter you, know? you want to be. Yeah, I mean, essentially, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and I mean, you know, and I mean, I'm not, I didn't start this out to make money, you know. Um, but why not? It'd be nice, <laughs> finally. But I yes. mean, it's like, I've, you know, I've been doing it for so long where, you know, um, the money that I would be making from it, you know, the potential money would be going back into the thing anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to see happen, you know. And I want to, you know, be able for it to be, because it's self-sustaining now, but I want it to be able to continue running as Absolutely. a self-sustaining thing where I can put bands like, a band like the Idiot Kids or a band like Brother Son, like these two bands that are, you know, like going out and they're going to be doing big mm -hmm. things. And I want, you know, something like that where I can push for it because I know that they're going to, you know, yeah. want to go to, because you have to want it first. Oh, absolutely. And if, if absolutely. you, you know, because I, I, I can only push so far, you know. Yeah, they have to have the passion as well. Yeah, oh, def yeah definitely. Yeah. Like, I mean, I talked to the guys from the Idiot Kids and they were like, yeah, we'll, we'll go on tour whenever, like whenever <laughs> we can. You know, which which is great. That's like the mm -hmm. opera. That's that's what I want to hear. You know, because you know, um, you know, it's not like I'm wasting my time or anything, but it's a load of fun. You know, to be going at it and seeing these people. You know, like push for themselves. Yeah. Because you know, as I said, I can only do so much. Like I'm just the record. But your out, enthusiasm you know? and your drive and everything yeah. has to rub off on these bands and you yeah, know, everything yeah, yeah. that says yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the name is synonymous with me at this point. Yes. So yeah. I mean, it's not like I can just give it to somebody else to run. Uh, Unfortunately, I wish I could for like a week to get some time off from it, but um, you know, because it's a bit draining sometimes because mm -hmm. you know, it's a lot of work. But um, you know, it's it's become synonymous with me. So people approach me and they send me demos and stuff, and I listen to them. But really, like at this point, you know, up until a little while ago, it was a thing where I had to like seek out bands individually because oh, okay. I was like, I can't listen to this many demos <laughs> or this stuff, you know. Yeah. And if I hadn't heard yeah. the band, I'm like, I can't take a gamble. But now it's like. If I see something in this band, like a random band that you know sends me and sends me an email, I'm like, if I see something in it, then I'm more so willing to go at it because now I'm willing to take a risk because yeah. I know that there's they're people out there about it, yes. who are passionate and they want to yeah. push for it and they're like, hey, we already have a video and here's our here's our songs and then here's our finished thing and then here's a bunch of pictures of us and then a nice email. You no, know, you, like, you like, want to okay, su yeah. support like someone that supports themselves. Yeah, yes. yeah, no doubt. Yeah, no doubt. That makes a difference. So yeah. Um, Okay, now normally I do a Pam exam when I have musicians in That's here. That's why I signed the release. <laughs> <laughs> He's not a, really a musician. I, you're a writer and, right, and yeah, you know, yeah. you're an entrepreneur, business guy. I mean, you're a, but I pulled out a few that might work for you. So uh, we'll go ask a few questions if you. Anything I said for astrophysics. <laughs> I'm good with that. Uh, By the way, what are you yeah. studying at? Is it business you're studying um, at Wayne State? I'm studying or? English and German. Oh, um, German. Which is a strange, uh, strange combination. Yeah. However, it's like. You know, because, I mean, I don't want to study business because I already know how to do it. And, you know, it's like... It, it just Talk about like, confidence. Just, I love yeah, this good. Yeah, yeah. I don't need that. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's... um, Yeah, I took German in high school because I went to, like, an IB school, which is, like, an AP kind of You're exam right. kind of thing. So I went... Did did, did that, so I just want to keep learning German. Um, okay. So, and then hmm. English I'm trying to think, what can I you like do writing, with you know? German and the record business? Hmm. Run a record label in Germany? Oh, I mean, uh, there know. you go. Okay. I don't know. Maybe... maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you never know. In five years, we're going to check in and see yeah. what that helps about. Okay. Um, the biggest obstacle in the music industry, industry today is? Ooh. Um, you may, I don't know if you can answer that one or not. Mm. But Oh, I can. Um, biggest obstacle. Um, you know, I'd kind of say uh, major labels because, <laughs> you know, it's like at, the, at this point, major labels are kind of, you know, pushing things towards, you know, everything's mainstream. And if you pay... You know, if you pay $5 million to get this One Direction song on the radio, it's going to get on the radio regardless if it's good or not, regardless if someone likes it or not. The DJ has to play it because they're being paid. You know, so it's like, and this is like mainstream, like mainstream radio and like internet radio, like Sirius XM mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. Nothing against it. I mean, is that, that a, 
but I five mean, million is did you just pull that number out or is that accurate? ten million, twenty million? I don't okay, know. Right. But a lot of like, like like pumping millions of dollars into these acts that you know like like I won't say they're not talented. I mean I've never listened to One Direction personally. They might be good, <laughs> but I mean you know it's like it, it, it's what I pull. It's a stereotypical bad band. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I pulled it out, but it's something where you know they pay you'll pay like like definitely over a million dollars to get these bands. That's crazy. To get these bands placements and then. You know, what other reason is there for Justin Timberlake to be playing the Super Bowl and stuff like this? So it's like, you know, I'd rather see Weird Al. But, um, <laughs> you know, everything going off like that, it's like, you know, th they're really pushing for, and I'm like, I'm like moving against that. Like, I'm trying to push bands from the ground up, bands that don't have any money, bands that, you know, don't already have touring support, and mm -hmm. nobody's behind them. And I mean, before, when I first started the label, I saw it as like a stepping stone where I'm like, if I can put out, these records and maybe somebody else will notice them but now i'm like why don't i just do it all because these guys don't care and if i if i care you know i don't want to be like one of the one of those fat cats in the suits just like you know not uh not paying attention to what to what a musician says because i know jeff the brotherhood put an album out on warner brothers and they held it back for like a year and a half or something mm. crazy because they you know they had a list of various reasons that they want to hold it back like the marketing wasn't right and i'm just like that's why so that, many artists hurting. are yeah. doing going independent because the, rec great. the yeah, big yeah. La record labels they kind of yeah. have a you know a hold on you unfortunately right. so yeah. yeah I'm not saying they don't do anything good oh but right, I mean, you right. Know, when it comes down to it it's like I prefer the DIY yeah you know? yeah all right do you have uh, give me one thing on your bucket list first of all do you have a bucket list I have not written one all right I'm pretend yet. you have a bucket list mm, okay. what would be one thing on there that you would love to do mm, that's great um, uh, we're pretending here <laughs> ooh. Um, I want to go to Colorado and visit the mountains. I was just there. Beautiful. Uh, really? <laughs> yeah, really, it was freezing great. here and it was 50 there. I was like, oh, Yeah, my, nice my, fr my, my friend Nick's over there and he's told me quite a bit about it. Beautiful and, city. Um, and yeah. sent me photos and stuff. Well, that's easy like, enough for you. I mean, that's, yeah. that's easy. Yeah, I mean, like, what else? I've done it all. Yeah. All right. <laughs> no. um, do you have a favorite pastime that's not related to the music industry? Um, uh, uh, I watched some TV. I'm really excited for the return of the X Files. Return on Wednesday. <laughs> that was great. Like uh, Twin He's Peaks. He's only 19, so this and, makes sense. Um, <laughs> Twin Peaks and stuff like that, yeah. and The Simpsons, and uh, you know, like I like that. M mostly, my life's consumed by music. Okay. And yeah. I like Star Wars too. It's good. It's a good movie. Now, uh, we talked about you were in the Rolling Stone, but this question: uh, If you could be on the cover of a magazine, God no. Which would it be, and why? <laughs> um. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um, I, you know, you know what? I, I imagine point, you on like, Inc. or Entrepreneur. You know, I can oh boy, see you um, on the cover of yeah. one of those magazines. Yeah, because a few years ago I looked at it from the point of, you know, like, I'm tired of the interviews. I don't want to do any more because oh, the focus for coming. was – Oh, No, stop. <laughs> stop it. No, because the focus was on – it was like um, me and they weren't talking about the bands at all. Like, they were talking about, meet 16-year-old Jared. He runs a record label. Isn't this cool? How do you do it? How did you do it? And everything's like that, you know. And now it's like, I can't write off the teen thing anymore because I'm not a teen. So now I have to, actually have to do something that's good. So not like, not like whatever happened wasn't. But I mean, you know. Um, but I mean, you know, like, I, I haven't thought about that. I mean, you know. Okay. Rolling Stone, it's nice. Well, you were in the Rolling Stone. I mean. I was, yeah. Not too many kids your age can say that you were in the Rolling Stone magazine. That's, I was. That's crazy. That is it? crazy. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, did you cut it out your, and have it posted on the wall and framed your oh, article? Oh, I'm not, I'm not that egotistical. <laughs> well, I think I your mean, mom uh, might do that. but <laughs> No, we do have a framed um, when I was on the cover of the Macomb Daily in 2013. Like That was the beginning of the label, and I was on the, the front page of the Sunday. There you go. Sunday um, paper. Sunday paper, mm. yeah. Paper, yeah. <laughs> They still make those? Like yes, records? They do. What? <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I was on the, and then frame that up and stuff, but yeah. What was the first concert you ever attended? Um, uh, um, I, I have a lot of ticket stubs, but I've always remembered it being told to me that it was the Kiss, um, like the farewell show. Okay. Like with all the original Kiss yeah, members, yeah, yeah. which is great because Kiss rule. And <laughs> um, it was like the last, the last show, I think it was at. I think it was at Pine Knob, but I can't recall because um, I was like, I don't know. I was like, I don't know if I was one or less than one, <laughs> but this was oh, like. You had earplugs on. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I did. That, that's the one thing I remember, like, you know, like like my dad mentions it. My mom's like, remember you had earplugs in, like, like you know, like validating that I had them in, which is, you know, great. Um, but yeah, I, um, 
Yeah, I don't remember anything about it, but that was the that was the first one, and I was like, I don't know, a year or less. See, uh, without it, you're too young to realize it, but without even knowing it, that influenced you. Yeah. I bet you're, you're yeah. just like, like I went went on a family trip to the Bahamas <laughs> when I was two. I don't remember that, and I see a picture. I was like, what? You know. All right, one final Crazy. question for you. Yeah. I and this is a fill in the blank. I wish I could. Huh. Um. That that's good. Um. I, I don't know. Um. I like to say that I like the label to be something that's self-sustaining enough for me to, you know, walk away from it a bit and try other things. Because I mean, I mean, not like I don't love this because this is amazing. You can tell you're passionate but, about it. But it's like you know, I've been doing it for so long. It'd be nice to have, you know, like have some time where I could like pursue other things. I don't know what I'm doing with the English and German double major. What am I gonna <laughs> do with that? So you know, I like I like to figure that out, and you know, because okay. I mean. Like, I think the record label is going to be good, but, I mean, I'd like to have, you know, obviously a pre-backup plan for something that... Plan you know, B. Yeah. Yeah, so, okay. I mean, you know... At this point, you don't know what Plan B is, at, but at, you're, at this you're point, thinking I you got to think about it. I mean, I, I wanted to go into... You're inter- only 19, for heaven's sake. I wanted to go entertainment you know? law at some point. I oh. wanted to, oh. you know, be a German teacher. I don't know what I'm going to do. But entertainment I, I, law? I have another, like, you know... That's big money yeah, in that. Yeah, class is at one thirty. I got to figure it out <laughs> <laughs> pretty soon. No, but, yeah, yeah, it's it's um it's fun. I've had fun so far. And I mean, you know, it's um, it's like a, it's really a rewarding experience to be able to, you know, to help people mm-hmm. out and to make these things exist. So, you know, Very cool. from that, it's just a lot of fun. That's having yeah. fun. Sounds good. Sounds yeah. good. So, um, if, so if people want to get in touch with you or you know find out more about your uh, label and, yeah. and what you're doing and the bands and everything, what's a good way yeah, to do that? Yeah, um, I have a website or a Facebook page. Both of them are uh, www dot for the email for the website jett plastic recordings.com and the facebook page is the same and to get in contact with me i just have um you know like a about us page or a contact us page that you can go through and okay. send me an email and even if even if nothing's going on like you know like send me a knock knock joke or something like even <laughs> if, like even if you uh you know even if you're just uh or you did knock knock jokes even if you're or something just goofing, goofing around i mean i can have fun too yeah I don't, i'm not like not you know just you're not, not all not, business. not just knock knock yeah. jokes yeah <laughs> This isn't just, not just business. I'm a wild and crazy guy. Okay. Yeah. You bet, yeah. Well, it has been uh, very enlightening. And, uh, you know, just the fact um, of what you've accomplished so far is very enlightening. I mean, if more kids and more, you know, a young age kind of followed yeah. in your footsteps and, and realized, I can do whatever I want. You know, I think that the right. things would be so much better around here. So I kudos you. to you and, and your parents, you know, that you've, you, you're driven, for sure. Thank you very for much. Sure. And yeah. I, uh, I'm sure bigger things coming down the line. And good Working luck on, on your it, yeah. store opening. Thank you. So, Thank um, you. I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah that'll be good. So um, you will keep, you know, I'm sure everybody will know when you yeah, post yeah, it I'll on keep, your Facebook. Um, and I'll keep everything uh, everything updated. And I'll, um, you know, working on a revamp of the website right now. So it's like, you know, I'm just, um, you know, I'm figuring it out as I go. But, I mean, it's doing good so far. Yeah. So I'm glad to be in the position I'm at, I am. And I'm really happy that, you know. Um, you know, I was invited here to talk about it. Thank you so well, much. Sure, absolutely. So, I thought a great way to start, the, you know, the new year yeah. without necessarily new a musician year, here. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, let's, you know, because there's, like I said, a lot of musicians watch this, so you know, they might start thinking, hmm, maybe I should do a vinyl. And, you should. You yeah, should. You definitely should. Call this guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can help you out. G- give me so. a ring. The phones are open. It's uh, eight hundred. <laughs> no, uh, but um, you know, just uh, just. Hit me up and uh, let me know what your ideas are, really, because I mean, I'd, I'd like to help as much as I can. Yeah. Because yeah. as I said, there's you know there's so much that goes into this, and I only you know going at it from that point, you know, there's really a lot that goes into the whole process. And if I learned it all at one point rather than having to wait like five years to amass it all from various people, that would have been like the best thing in the world. But so, it didn't but, happen. But you still learned. And oh, you I still I, I still learned. Yeah. I'm fine with it. But I mean, <laughs> if I can help out other people oh, with ease, absolutely, you know, I'm all for absolutely. It, you know? You've you've been yeah. there, done that. You yeah, know what yeah. to not what yeah. not to do. So definitely, definitely, good for you. Yeah. Well, congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. It's been a pleasure talking with you today. Likewise. And um, Thank you very like much. I said, we're, I, I see some uh, big things. Maybe you'll be on the cover of the Rolling Stone oh, next time. Oh, oh boy! Please, <laughs> please, yes, yeah, yeah. You never know. Counting down the days. You know, yeah. you never know. Yeah, never say I, never. <laughs> never. 
No, for, and I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Well, good for you. Uh, kudos to you. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Michigan State University Community School of Detroit and Children's Hospital of Michigan Foundation for supporting this uh, wonderful venue here, Music Town Detroit. And um, again, we will, as I do every week, I have local musicians on here and or music industry people, and um, that's what it's all about, promoting everybody and helping it out in this great city, the, the D. We are live in the D from downtown Detroit. So again, thank you so much for tuning in, and um, if you are a band, let me know, and you want to get on the show, all you do is contact me. I'm all over the web. You can f find me easily as well. Um, so again, thank you, Jarrett Coral, for coming in thank today you. and chatting with us. It's been a pleasure, and so glad to meet you and, and talk with you today. So again, thanks for all of you out there tuning in and joining us for Behind the Mic. I'm Pam Rossi. Have a great week.